All right. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Yesterlore. I am Grimm's Lawyer, and tonight we are going to continue reading the first fit of uh, Sir Gowan and the Green Knight. Um, when I say first fit, if you were not here last time, um, that's one of many ways to refer to the different parts. They're typically considered to be four parts of this poem. Um, uh, I just realized I forgot to close my door. I'm going to do that real quick. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right. Um, so last time we were um, reading the Middle English as we have been doing for a while. We've been reading Middle English stuff, and we're still going to read the Middle English this time. Um, However, last time I was reading from a version, it is the uh, version edited by um, Tolkien and, ooh, what's the other author's name? Shoot. What's the other editor's name? I am not remembering. I'm going to look this up real quick. Um, this is important. Um, I thought I remembered this, but I do not. Um, sorry, when I have OBS open, everything else runs very slowly, so it's taking a long time to open <laughs> the last version that we were reading from. Um, but what you might remember, if you were here last time, or you watched the last video, is um, that we... Uh, we're reading from a version that didn't have line numbers, and it was getting really easy for me to lose my place as we were reading, which I apologize for. That probably made the last um, episode kind of tedious. Evie Gordon, that's the other editor. And that's the version you can buy from, like, the Tolkien collection, too, if you ever try to get those books. Um, there's, like, a whole collection where the, of, like, Tolkien's, like, Middle-earth books and his non-Middle-earth uh, related books. Um and things that he worked on that all sort of have similar colors, um, covers, I mean, um, and his edition of Sir Gowan and the Green Knight by E.B. Gordon and Tolkien um, is available. It's probably one of the most well-known versions, um, but there are some very famous translations as well. Um, the version we're looking at here is the edition by Karen Arthur, edited by Karen Arthur um, from 1996. Um, but this version has two things. It has a translation, um, but it also, well, it, ha it has the page num line numbers, most importantly, but it also has a translation, interlinear. Now, the translation is Ernest J.B. Kirtland's translation from 1912, um, which um, should be in the public domain. I looked around and checked, and I couldn't find anything that um, would contest that it was in the public domain. Um, it's certainly old enough. Um, if not, I will definitely take the recording down um, once I put this up, but I doubt that's going to be necessary. 1912 should be, we should be safe there. Um, but uh, just to be extra safe, I'm not going to read the translation um, verbally. Um, it will be visible. It's interlinear. Um, it's not actually quite, this edition calls it interlinear. It's actually not quite interlinear. Interlinear would be like, you'd have the Middle English, and then you'd have the Modern English translation, like, next to it, or, like, in between, really. What this does is, in between each stanza, it translates the stanza, and you can see that here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the Middle English, and then we're going to sort of scroll down and talk about what happened. I'm not going to read a verbatim from what 
um, it says in this modern English translation. Um, and then we'll just sort of move on. But I, what I hope is that that will actually help us to move a bit more quickly. Because um, you can kind of read it yourself if you need to pause and read the modern English. You can if you're feeling lost. Um, uh, and I will actually share the link to this um, edition. It will also be in the YouTube upload. Um, and I'll try to pin the link. Apparently pinned links don't stay pinned for very long. Pinned messages, I mean. Um, but we'll try to keep it um, pinned. Um, also, what I'm going to send is um, you can find just the translation on archive, and I'm going to link it. Um, and this page, this is actually the page that starts on, which is actually page 50 of the archive.org like, document that you have to scroll through. So I scrolled to page 50 for you because that's where it actually starts. There's an introduction if you want to go back and read it, but there, there's the link to that. Um, uh, I don't know if I will put that in the YouTube of what I might just put the one that we're reading from because that's what matters the most is so people can read along with us in the middle English. Um, but uh, what happened last time? Let's let's try to catch up to where we were. So we got to 278. Um, thankfully this version has uh, numbers so that we can tell that. Um, and what happened was uh, we started by getting just some setting from the poet as we typically do in these kinds of poems. Um, uh, sort of the history of connecting England to Troy as Middle English um, poems are wont to do and just medieval um, works in general like to connect whatever story they're telling to Troy somehow. Um, and what we, at least at least in Western Europe, that's, that's the common thing to do. Um, and then we get sort of ex exclam... What am I trying to say? Some... Some sort of exclamatory description of Arthur. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time speaking today. Um, there we go. Extolling, that's what I was looking for. Oh, you know, it started with the next. Extolling Arthur for being such a great king. Then we get a description of uh, Queen Guinevere on her throne um, and how great she looks and awesome she is. Same with Arthur, how great he looks, how awesome he is. Um, and they're having a Christmas time feast, and now it's New Year's Eve, which is still part of the whole Christmas festivities. Um, and Arthur has this tradition of not starting to eat until either there's been some kind of story told or some kind of um, threat or joust or something like that, or some kind of game that happens or some kind of miracle or marvel. Um, so they haven't started eating yet. Everyone's been served their food. And then in rides a big, tall green man on a green horse. And he's green, but he's super decked out in, like, awesome clothes interlaced with gold. Same with the horse. The horse is, like, decked out in gold and green. Um, he's green. His clothes are green. The horse is green. The horse's clothes are green. Um, he's not dressed in battle gear. Just, he just looks awesome. And we spend several stanzas hearing a very detailed description of how great he looks. Um, Sort of, if you can imagine a camera, it's sort of like the camera's just kind of lingering over him. Then he puts out a challenge. He says, um, where's the person in charge here? Um, and Arthur's like, here I am. Hello. What do you want? Um, do you want some kind of fight or, you know, something like that? And the Green Knight's like, well, clearly you can see I'm not dressed in... Um, armor or anything like that. I haven't brought my swords or spears or anything like that. I, um, I'm just here for a game. And Arthur's like, what, what do you want if you don't want to fight? Um, well, let's see now what the Green Knight has to say. He says, um, actually, let me zoom in one more time. Maybe make this a little bit bigger. I think that will help. Yeah. Okay. 
he says, Nei freist i no ficht in faith i thae tell, hit arna bolt on this bench both bedless children, if he were a husband in armes on a hae stede, here is no man me to match for michtes fo weiker. For thee crawe in this court a Christmas gommen, for it is yol and new year, and here are yep money. If any so hardy in this house holds, holds himself in, be so bold in his bold brine, blood brine in his head. Fat dar stiffly streak a stroke for another, ye shall give him of me gift this yisen riche, this axe that is heavy, enough, enough to handle as him likes, and it shall be that the first boor as bar as he sitte. If any freke be so felle to fonde that he telle, lep lichtly me to, and latch this weapon. I quit climb hit for ever keep hit as his owen, as I shall stonde him a stroke stiff on this flat, elits tho will dicht me a uh, dome to del him another. Barlai, And yet, and yet, if him respite, a twelve month and a die, no here and let say tita dar ani herin och tsai. So, he's like, I'm not here to fight. He again reiterates, I'm not here to fight. I'm here for a Christmas game because it's Christmas and New Year. Um, Tis the season for some games and his game is simple he has left his swords and his spears and all that at home but he has brought his axe that he holds very dear but um he says he's relinquishing ownership of it if any is bold enough to come and give him a stroke with the axe just <laughs> chop him um and Part of the game is you do that to me, and then I'll give you 12 months and a day. I'll give you 366 days ish um, to uh, of like leeway of time before it's my turn to do the same to you. So that's the game. You chop off my head if you're bold enough and strong enough to wield this very heavy axe and then it's your axe but then in a year and a day i get to do the same to you so are you brave enough are you strong enough to do it um so does that just thinking if you're especially if you're new to this story you've never heard it before or read it before um how does that make sense you're gonna chop off my head and then in a year and a day, I will chop off yours. How is he going to chop off your head if you've chopped off his head? Um, well, first of all, he's not guaranteeing that you will chop off his head. It's just you're supposed to try. Maybe you'll fail. Um, the other thing is, uh, let's not be so quick to apply logic <laughs> to what's happening here. He's green for um, Christmas sake. Um, he... Um, I think we got a hint earlier above in like an earlier stanza, like he's something out of the pagan past is what it seems like to the people there. Um, so, dare any here in aught say is how um, uh, Kirtlin translated this. So, um, basically, whose game? Um, with the implication being that hopefully Arthur is because he's the king that... Um, uh, the green knight was looking for. I'm just realizing there's a danger that some of this might get cut off, so I'm going to widen the side here a little bit. There we go. Um, okay. I think that's okay. Cool. Move this over a bit. If him stoned upon first stiller were thana alle the herred men in halle, the hig and the law, the rank of his wrong se him rochid in his saddle, and runishly his rede iyen he relled a bota. 
Pende his braised brows, bleak on the grena, wived his beard for the for the white quo so wold reason. When none wold keep him with carp, he coughed full here, and reamed him full richly, and reached him to speak. What is this Arthur's house, quoth the hadder, then? That all the rose renes of Thor realm so money, where is no your sorquidry and your conquest? Sorry, I forgot it was spelled like this. Um, your greed the like, and your grammar and your greater words, knowest the revel and the renown of the great round table, overwalt with a word of unweakest speech, for all dares for dread without dint shewed. With this he lache so loud that the Lord graved the blood shot for sham into his sheer face, and later he wex as wroth as wind, so did all that there were the king as kende be kinder, as kene be kinder, then stood that stiff man nearer. So now everyone's just aghast. They're like, um, hello, what? That A makes no sense, and B, why would you suggest this? Um, and no one answers, and so he's like, um, what happened to this whole all the knights of the round table are the greatest in the world thing that's been spread around, you know, through all the stories, everyone knows King Arthur's court is the greatest, and here I am, and everyone's just kind of like, scared? You're all, you're all too scared, no one's gonna do it? And he laughs, and then King Arthur, um, stands up, he's like, okay, challenge, um, about to be accepted. <laughs> so, on the side, Hadel be heaven thin, thin asking his niece, as though folly hats freist finde behoves, uh, finde they behoves, I know no goma that is ghast of the great awards. Give me no the gezerna upon God's halve, and I shall buy them the bona that thou boden habest. Licht the lepis he him to, and lacht at his hand. Then firstly that other freka upon forte lichtes, and no hats Arthur his axa, and behalme grippet. And sternly stores hit a boat that streaka with hit, uh, with hit thought. The stiff mourn him before stood upon hicht. Herr then ani in the house, be the head and more. With sternly share there he stood, he struck at his bird. And with a countenance drieche he drog down his coat. No more matter, ne dismide for his mind dintis. Then Annie born upon bench had brought him to drink of win. Gawain, that sitter be the queen, to the king he can incline, he beseech no with sahis sena, this melly mot be mean. Okay, one thing I forgot to um, remind everyone of in our recap is uh, it was pointed out that Sir Gawain, um, who is Arthur's nephew, um, through his sister, his sister's son, and his other sister's son, Agravain, which seems to maybe be Gawain's brother, in some stories he is, at least. Um, anyway, they're his sister's sons, maybe through the same sister, therefore they would be brothers. But um, what matters is that they're on either side, and Gawain is seated next to Gynord. And I talked about how that happens a lot in stories in the last poem we read, which was, um, not Three Dead Kings, the advent, uh, the Aunter of Arthur at t the Terran Wathling. We had uh, Gawain and Ganor together there, too. Um, and I think I mentioned part of that might just be that their names alliterate, and that's really convenient, that um, whether it's with G alliteration or with W alliteration, you can make both of their names alliterate very easily. So having them next to each other make, like is helpful, and it also makes sense given his like family relationship. Like, that's his maternal aunt-in-law, I guess. Um, he's important to... The court, it, it, I guess, like he's royalty-ish, so he gets to sit next to Guinevere often. But I think in this story, it's important that we remember that he's seated next to Guinevere, because that's going to matter later. So, um, anyways, back on track. So, um, he says, Arthur says, um, this is weird, but I'm going to do what you ask. Um, I'm, I'm, no, I'm no coward. My court's no no cowardly court either, so I'm going to prove that. I'm going to stand up, 
Um, so he does. He stands up and he takes the axe and he's like, you know, getting ready to do it. Um, but Gawain, um, sorry, Gawain, I'm trying to remember to pronounce Gawain in this alliterative poem, um, stands up and says, like, wait, let me do it. <laughs> I tell thee truth, I ween, this melee must be mine. Um, he says, Is pisech no with sages sena this meli mot be Um I like that we, uh, the Kirtland is spelling the melee based on like the French spelling that it comes from, whereas the Middle English poem is spelling it how it sounds in English. <laughs> and you'll hear, you see that sometimes a lot. We like who edited the word to be more etymologically sound from like where it comes from in French, but modern French because at the time it wasn't spelled this way <laughs> like this would not be how it was spelled in middle french at the time um but this is how it sounded when the word came into english so anyways gawain has spoken up and he he's like nope let me do it wait sorry the thing about this edition that the other edition had, but this one does not, is that this one does not, I think to preserve like authenticity, it does not actually show where quotation marks are, which if you remember back when we were reading Old English manuscripts and stuff, that's pretty common. Um, there was there was no such thing as quotation marks, so you just have to kind of know when someone's speaking. Um, and that's one of the jobs of editors to do a lot of the time is to show you where quotation marks probably would go nowadays if we if they had used them then. Um, but the truth is in manuscripts, you wouldn't really see quotation marks at this period. Um, at least not in this manuscript. Um, there were probably some, no, there are definitely some precursors to quotation marks in some places. Sometimes people would just like use whatever punctuation they typically use, like dots or comma looking things. But all that tells you is that you have like a new sentence usually, um, or even new clause. Sometimes it was in the middle of a sentence. We've talked about how inconsistent medieval punctuation is. Um, just like with spelling, there's no standardization in the punctuation. Um, and so this edition is actually preserving that there's no quotes here. You just kind of have to tell from context. So sometimes if I'm stumbling a little bit, it's like me realizing, oh, wait, this is part of a quote. Um, like you can see here, quoth Gawain. So this is a quote. That's why I hesitated. Okay. Wold ye worthelich lord, quoth Gawain to the king. Bid me bore frothis bencha, and stonda be yo thera, that ye with ota villaine micht void this table, and that me lega ladi licked not ill. E wold come to your consail before your court richer, for me think it not semly as it is soth knawen. Fair such an asking is heavened so here on in your sala. Thak ye yourself. Be talentif to take hit to your selvin, will money so bold yo upon a boater upon bench sitten, that under heaven he hope non a hahirer of will. Ne better body as on bent, far barret is red. I am the wackest i wot, and of wit fablest, and less lure of me leaf quo lightest they saw the. But for as much as ye are mean, and e am only to prize, no bounty but your blood e in me body knowe. And sitting this nota is so nis that nocht hit yo fallas, and e have a freined hit at yo first fall that hit to me. And if he carp not comely, let all this court rich boat blama, rich together con ron. And sit in thy red in Alessama, to read the king with crown, and yif gawen the gamma. So here he's asking for permission. He's like, let me do this, please. Um, and us pointing out again, he's asking for uh, Guinevere's permission too, and if my liege lady likes it, not ill. And that's up here. Me lege ladi liked not ill. Um, let me come help you, let me do it, um, you know, um, and he is kind of humble, um, 
he's humbling himself. He says he's the weakest and the not the brightest either. Um, but, um, and for that reason, if he fails the game, like if he either fails, well, either way, it's kind of failing because if you succeed, he'll chop off your head in a year. If you fail, you fail to chop off his head. And we are not quite, quite sure what the consequences of that would be. Um, but he's like, if something happens to me, it's not as big of a deal, whereas you're the king. Um, but he's like, I'm, yeah, I may be your nephew, but that's not what matters here. Um, give me the game. <laughs> Let me do it. So, um, he's showing bravery here. Um, and notice the difference in this story. In the last one, he was already kind of a renowned knight. He fought Sir Galeron and very valiantly and ended up... Hmm. What do you say he won? I mean, I guess he won because he got to keep the lamb because Galeron gave it to him at the end. At least half of it. Um, but it was more like Guinevere intervened in the last one um, on the behalf of Galeron's um, lady. Um, but... Anyways, he was definitely, like, a very strong knight. And you'll see that in a lot of other uh, Gawain stories, is he's, like, the greatest knight of the round table. In other stories, it's Lancelot. Depends on who's writing the poem, <laughs> whether Lancelot or Gawain is the best. Sometimes they're both the best, but in different ways. Um, it makes... It leads to some problems in, like, modern Arthurian adaptations sometimes, where they have Sir Gawain and Sir Lancelot both there, but they're both supposed to be the greatest knights of the round table ever. It's like, how are they the greatest? In what way? Uh, you have to kind of come up with some creative solutions there. Um, or you just don't, and you just say that they're both the best, <laughs> which some adaptations have done. Um, but in this one, no. He is not the, at least in it, by his own account, he is not the greatest. He's not the strongest. He's not even the smartest. He's, he's just related to the king. So let's continue. What happens next? Then commanded the king, the knight for Teresa, and he full radly uprose, and rushed him fire. Do you ever choke on air? Because <laughs> that's what just happened to me. I was just like, <laughs> I like inhaled weird. Um, okay. <sighs> um, Knele down before the king, and catches that weapon, and he luffily hit him laughed and lift up his Honda, and gave him God's blessing, and gladly him be this, that his heart and his hand should hardly be both. Keep the cousin, quoth the king, that thou on kirf setter, and if thou redest him richt, redly he troa, that thou shall bidden the boor that he shall bede after, gawen gods to the goma, with gizern in Honda, and he badly him be this, his beist never him the helder, then carpus to Sir Gawain, the knight in the grena. Reform we over forwardus, er we fear passa. First ye ere the hadl, ho that thou hattest, in that thou may tell it truly, as ye trist my, in God five, uh, as ye trist my. In God five, quoth the god the knight Gawain, ye hattest that bedeth this buffet, quat so befalleth after. And at this team a twelve month taka at the another with what what weapon for thou wilt and with no weak else on lever that other on swares again sir gawen so mot i thriva as i am fairly fine this dint that thou shall drive. all right So, um, here the king is like, okay, stand up, Gawain. He's very ready to accept Sir Gawain's offer to not have him be the one who cuts off this guy's head and gets his head all cut off later. Um, he's like, okay, if you say so, sure, so, sure, Sir Gawain. And he gives him his blessing. Um, and so then, uh, and, and like, good luck. And then he, um, then Gawain takes up the axe, um, and then the Green Knight adds something. He's like, uh, first tell me your name. And then Sir Gawain's like, I'm Sir Gawain. Um, which he's already said. So um, that's kind of funny that the knight is only just now asking when Sir Gawain already said, like, 
give Gowan the game? Who's Gowan? Well, it's the person who's saying, give me the game. Um, although that this might just sort of be like a, what is diegetically said versus what is said by the poet. It's not entirely clear. Like I said, there's no clear quotations, but also just like, we can't be applying CinemaSins logic to this. Um, he, he, even even if he heard him, let's let's say he did hear him, he still wants to have like a formal like let us introduce each other kind of exchange. Either way, he's like, tell me your name directly, and so so that we can start. He doesn't do the same in return, though. <laughs> That's kind of interesting, though. Um, uh, and um, uh, Sir Gowan, in addition to giving his name, says like, I am gonna keep with this bargain, and in a, a year and a day. You're going to get to um, cut my head back. And uh, the Green Knight's like, cool, can't wait. <laughs> so that, that's what he's saying here at the end. I am fairly fine this dint that thou shall drive. Um, yeah, well, he's like, I can't wait for what you're going to give me, um, this dint, this blow. Can't wait for you to ch chop off my head. Um, okay. Um, so here we go. Um, and I think I mentioned this last time that there is going to be some description of, um, you know, cutting someone's head off. <laughs> so um, I'm not going to dwell on the actual, like, gruesome details of it. I'm just going to say when it has happened, and then we'll, we'll move from there. I'm not going to dwell on it very long. But if that's something you're worried about, I'll just know that that is coming up very soon. He's about to lift up the axe. Um, I can't remember if it's in this stanza or the next one. Um, Yeah, it's in the next one that he actually, like, cuts it. So, um, hopefully, also, the, the Middle English will, um, be, um, masking it enough as well, if it's difficult to get through. Just, just so you know, that is coming up. That's, that's my warning here, content warning for that. All right. Bigog. Quoth the Grena Knicht, Sir Gawain me likes that he shall fanga at the fust, that he hath freist here, and thou hath readily rehearsed by reason, full truer, clanly, all the co covenant. That he the king asked, Saf, that thou shall sicker me sege, be the trouther, that thou shall sege me thyself. Where, th where so thou hopest. I my befund upon fold and folk the such wages, as thou delest me to die before this doth reach. Where shall the wale? they quoth. Where shall the wale? they quoth Gawan. Where is the platter? I would never where thou wonest be him that me rocht. Ne I know not, they knicht. Be court ne thinama, <laughs> but teach me truly, therto and tell me how thou hattest, and I shall wara all me wit to winne me thither, and that is swear thee for sova, and be me sicker troweth that is enoch in no year hit nedis no more. Quoth the goma in the grain, sorry. The quote ended here. The Green Knight speaking here. That is enough in no year, it needs no more, quoth the gome in Grenic to in Grena to Gawan the Hende. If I the tell it truly, Quen, I Quen I the tap a have, and so me smotherly hats smitten smartly, I the teacher. Of me host and me homer, and me owen noma, then my thou fryest me fara, and forwardest hold, and if he spend no speech, then spadest thou with a better, for thou my leng in thee londa, and light no fear, but slokes. Ta, no, thee grim tolle to thee, and let se ho thou knockes, gladly ser for sother. Quoth Gawain, his axe, his strokes. So, um, here, the Green Knight adds an addendum to the agreement. He's, he's like, wow, like, 
awesome to hear that you're so game to do this, but there's some there's there's another piece of this. You're gonna have to find me before the end of the year in a day. Time limit is up. You're gonna have to go out and search for me and find me, um, and meet me at my place to get it done. I'm not gonna come back here in a year for you to chop my head off or for me to chop your head off. You're gonna have to come find me to get your head chopped off instead. Um, and Gowan's like. Okay, I promise I'll look for you. Like, I'm going to keep to that part. But, like, can you tell me where to find you? And also what your name is. Like like I mentioned, like, it's kind of weird he didn't give his name back. Um, and the Green Knight's like, um, all you need to know is uh, you'll know when you know. Kind of like, if I tell you, he's like, I'll tell you all that information once I've cut your head off. <laughs> I'll tell you my name and all that stuff once I've dealt my blow with the axe. Um, and so, uh, Sir Gowan's like, okay, fair enough. And then he strikes. All right, here's where we get some of the gruesome details. I will try not to spend too much time on this. Um, so, the grene knicht upon groen de grathele him dresses a little loot with the head of the letter he Discoveres. Discoveres. Um, his longer lovelich lock as he lied over his crown, that let the naked neck to the not the shower. Okay, we're actually going to skip this part. Um, if you want to read this on your own, we're going to do that. I'm actually not able to read this, I think, um, even in Middle English, because I can understand the Middle English, and it's hard for me to read. But suffice it to say, um, uh, his head falls to the ground and rolls on the floor. <laughs> okay, then what happens? For the head in his hand, he held this up even towards the deres on the deck. He dresses the face and it lifts the up the ear, led us unlocked full brother and melted thus much with his mother. As ye might no hair, lock it. Gawain tho begreife to go as tho hetes, and leite as leli till tho me lude finde, as tho hats hete, in this halle herande thise knichtes, to the grene chapel tho chose, i charge thee to fota, such a dunt, as tho hats dalt to serve tho habits, to the jederli golden, on nu jeres morn, the knicht of the grene chapel men knowen me money, for thee me for to finde if thou freistest filest and thou never. Therefore come o the cre uh, recreant be calde the behoves, with a runish rote, the reines he tornes, halled out at the hall door his head in his hand, for the fear on the flint flache fro folle hoves, to quat keith. He become knua mon thera, never more than thy wister from quethen he wats wunen. What thena the king and gawen thara at that grene thai laha and grene. And grene. Yet braved wats hit full bara and mervile among thou mena. So, the green knight has not died. He has picked up his head. And he's holding it now in his hands. And he speaks from his head. <laughs> and he says, okay, um, make sure you keep your promise. Um, he gets to, he gives a hint now. Um, go to the Green Chapel. I am the Knight of the Green Chapel. So he kind of gives a name. I'm the Knight of the Green Chapel. Go find the Green Chapel and you'll find me. Um, good luck. Um, then he leaves. And r right away, everyone kind of moves on. Everyone's just kind of like, okay, that was wild. And now there's been, as Arthur was saying was required, there's been a marvelous thing that has happened, a miracle, or something similar to one. <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily say this is a miracle in the Christian sense that he was probably intending but um something wild has happened for sure which means people can eat now <laughs> so that's the good news everyone can eat and make light of this whole situation so what next what happens next 
Sa arser se hende king at hert had wonder. He let no semblat besene, but side full hia, that the comlich quena with corte speche. Dere dama to die demai yo never. Well become such craft upon Christmas, liking of enter ludes to lacha and to sing. Among this kind the carolus of knichtes and ladies never the leche, uh, le, leke to me meta, I may me well dress. For I have seen, a selly I may not forsake. He glent upon Sir Gawain and gained his side. No, sir, hang up thin axe that hath enough heaven. And it what's done above the decker, and as the decker, on doser to hang. There alle men for mere while nicht on hit locker, and be trivial title thereof to tell they wonder, then thy bohed to a board this burnes together, the king and the god knicht, and kenem en hem servet, and of alle dainties dobla as deres mit falle, with alle manner of meta and minstrel see abothe, with wele walt thy that die till worthed on ende in Londa. No think well, Sir Gawain, for wotha, for thou ne wonder, this aventura, for to freine, that thou hadst han on hand. Okay. So, um, Arthur first speaks to Guinevere, and this is very important to remember. He says, don't be dismayed by all this stuff. Uh, he said, Dere dam to die de mai yo never. Dismay you never. Um, worry not. This is the kind of thing that happens on Christmas, or at least it's appropriate for Christmas. As I was saying, he wanted something wild to happen, and here we go. Um, it's time. Um, so, um... Now it's time for food, because a wondrous thing has happened. Um, and so then he looks at Gawain and is like, okay, hang up your axe. Um, you've done enough for today. Uh, kind of foreshadowing, like, you're going to have to do more later. <laughs> you have to keep your promise. Um, and he reassures him at the end, like, you made a promise, keep to your oath. Um, they, they have their party now that they've had a wild thing happen. So let's continue. This Hansella hat Arthur of Awen Tureson first in younge year for he yearned the helping to her. Tha him wordes were one when thy to say to went him. No are thy stocking of sterner work sta full her hand. Gawen was glad to begin at us gomnes in Halle. But tha the end be heavy, half ye no wonder, for tha men ben merry and minde, quen thy han mine drink. And yer yernes full yerna, and yeldes never like. The form to the finishment falls full seldom. For thief is yol over yede, and the yera after, and uche season serlepes, suid after other. After Christen massa com the crabbed lenton, that freistes flesh with. The fisher and fodder more simple. F but then at the weather of the world with winter hit threpes. Call the clang as a dawn clothes uplifting. Sheer a shade is the rain and shower is full warm. Fallet upon fire flat flower is the showing. Both the ground is and the grave in, uh, the grave is green are her wedes. Breed this busken to build and bremlich singen for solace of the soft summer that sues after. Be bonk, and blossom is bolne to blow, be raw is rich and wrong, then not is noble enough, are heard in a world so long. Okay, so the narrator kind of pulls back here a little bit. And we go to, like, okay, they celebrated their Christmas, and then, um, but, and Gowan is, like, happy to have done his brave thing, but it is sort of heavy on him. He's a little feeling the weight of his doom, but he is overall just kind of glad that he was able to prove himself by cutting the Nate's head off, um, but not killing him. Um, um, and 
like I said, the narrator pull, pulls back and he starts describing the season. So Christmas time ends, then it's um, Lent, so it's spring. And it's called Crabbed Lent, I think it was written here. Crabbed Lenten. Um, because of the whole eating seafood and fish thing um, during Lent and not other meats. Part of the fasting that happens during Lent. Then we get the summer description. And we're going to get some more season description here. After the season of summer with the soft windes, when Zephyrus Syphilis himself on say the San Herbes, well a wind is the word that waxes the rota. When the donk and the dewe dropes of the leves, and bid a blissful blush of the big sona. But then he was harvest, and hardness him sona, warnes him for the winter to wax full reaper. He drives with, with the drought the dust for to reason, for the face of the fold to flee he full here. Roth the wind of the welkin rustless with the sona. The leves lanken fro the linda and lichten on the ground, and all grey is the grass that grene what's era. Then all ripe sun rotes that rose upon first, and thus yearnes the year and yesterday's money, and winter windes again in the world duskes, no sage, till meil must mona. What's coming with winter waja, then think is gowan full sona. Of his años or viaja. Viaja. Sorry, that's, that should be real to be. Um, took me a second to realize that, but yeah, viaja. Um, so then we get the summer description, but then after the summer, the wind, the winds come in, the seeds, and we get harvest, autumn, and it's warnings for winter. And then we've get gotten Michaelmas. Um, uh. I don't know if I have time to explain my comments because we're almost out of time. Um, I'm going to see if I can send a link to that <laughs> instead. Um, um, as you can probably guess, though, it's a feast day for um, St. Michael. That's what Michael miss means. The mess is the mass part. Mass is in uh, feast. Um, but that's sort of um, a harvest thing. It's usually in September. Um, what resource do I want to send for this? I want to include it in the description of the YouTube video. I'm forgetting the specific date, but I know it's in late September. Um, September 29th is the day. Um, celebration of autumn, basically, um, is sort of why it's in that part of the calendar year, but it is um, Michael and all the other saints. I'll link this is from Historic UK, uh, which I think is more relevant since this is an Arthurian story. On Michaelmas. And I'll send it here too chat there we go um all right so so it's it's harvest time um um and so winter's coming and Gawain's like okay it's time to go on my trip he waited quite a while <laughs> to start going out and searching for a place he had no idea where it is um so ye quill al haldai with arthur hilengus and he made a far on that feast for the freckish sake, with much revel and rich of the round table, knichtes full cartes and comlich ladies, all for loof of that leda and longing that were thy were, but never the less, ne the latter thy nevened but merthe, money joyless for that gentle japes their maden. For after meta with morning he mailest to his aim, and speaketh of his passage and perkle his side, no liege lord of me leaf leve i yo ask, ye knoweth the cost of this casse, cape i no more, to tell yo tennis thereof never but trifle, but i am bone, 
to the poor barley to mourn, to search the gomes of the grain as God will make wis. Then the best of the poor bowed together, I won and Eric and other full money, Sir Dodin and all, the, sov- the savage, the Duke of Clarence, Launcelot and Lionel and Luke and the God, Sir Boss and Sir Bid- Bidwir, big men both, and many other men's full with Mador de la Porte. All of his company of court come the king nere, for to consul the knecht with Cara at her heart. There was much derva dowel driven in the sala, that so worth as wawan should the wind on that end. To drich a delful dint, and del no more with brande, the knichts mar I god chera, and sighed the quat shuldi wonder of destiny's derva, and dere. What my mon do but fonda. So, um, he waits until after Michaelmas, and he, then it's like weighing on his heart. But he waits until after all. All hal died. All Hallows Day. That's November first. Um. Right. I might be wrong about that. I'm pretty sure that's November first. I want to say because Hallows Eve is October thirty first. Um. I'm not wrong, right? I'm pretty sure it goes Hollow's Eve, and then it's Hollow's Day, and then it's Soul's Day. The Saints and then Souls. I'm trying to remember if this is true back then, though. I'm going to look this up. Yeah, it's, um... November 1st. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I, I wasn't sure if it would be the same at this time as it is now. But yeah. Um, so he waits until after... So it's November 1st. He's waited almost the full year. Um, and then they have a big feast. Um, and everyone wishes him well. And everyone's sad that he's leaving. And um, like they're sort of mourning him preemptively because like he's about to go and get hit on his neck with an axe the assumption being he's gonna get his neck sliced and get um his head chopped off so um we get a list of the knights who are mourning him preemptively like oh we'll miss you bye (laughs) um not a good morale boost honestly but um (laughs) yeah um and i think we can read one more stanza i think we have time um Actually, no, I think this is a good stopping route because next time we'll actually get him heading out. So, um, yeah, we're stopping here. 565 is where we got to today. Um, we almost read... We almost read 300 lines today. Um, and we finished Fit 1. Um, this edition does not mark the fit boundaries so i am actually not sure where the f- i don't remember where the fit one break is i'm actually going to check that as well since we have a couple minutes um i think the last version included the fit breaks um so i'm going to go there Two. Yeah, fit two started up here. Yeah, the seat when it started describing the seasons, that's where the fit. Oh yeah, it actually does have the break. break. I just skipped it. I just skipped it. All right, yeah, I fit two. We're in fit two. All right, um, so, yeah, I don't know why I skipped that. <laughs> um, anyways, yeah, so th- we'll, we'll pick up from this 
um, from on his journey next time. Finish fit one and begin fit two. Oh, sorry, go on. I just wanted to mention that in the YouTube description. Um, excellent. So I will see you all um, hopefully next week for more Sir Gowan and the Green Knight. We're on fit two, so we are doing good in terms of progress here. Um, next week may be our last year's thriller session for a couple weeks after that because of I'm traveling for um, the sort of Yuletide area of December. Um, so I might not be able to do Yesterlore. I will confirm that next week. Um, so hopefully we get to a good spot in Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. I'm hoping to finish Fit 2 next time maybe, since we're going at a much faster pace now. Um, and um, so we'll have like a little break between the fits, I suppose, and then we'll come back after um, Yule to do some more um, Sir Gawain and finish the story. So, um, although there is a chance, um, I, I, there's a small chance I could still do a stream during my trip. It just kind of depends. I will, I will confirm that next week. Also, um, don't forget that I still have my project streams I'm doing. Um, that's still going on, and those are Saturdays, um, and that's going to happen again tomorrow. They're um, an hour and a half, uh, so f I, I had to truncate the length a little bit. Um, it's from noon to 1.30 p.m., uh, Pacific. Um, so that will be, if you go to my stream, stream schedule on Twitch, you can see when that will be for you. Um, we are still translating and adapting the Northumbrian Rune Poem. We're getting pretty close to the end here um, in terms of where we're at, in terms of um, translating and adapting the Northumbrian Rune Poem into Old English. So um, join me for that tomorrow, if you can, or see that on YouTube if you're interested. Um, if not, I will see you next week. Thank you, and have a great rest of your time zone. Goodbye.